Last week, we aired the chilling story on the death of Nicole Polonia, a mother of five in San Pedro. What was witnessed by many beginning the week of January 19th, a woman in the nude on the street, the actions taken by the family, and her ultimate death is like the script of a horror movie, and a police investigation is ongoing. We have since uh, carried out a thorough investigation. Several statements have been recorded, exhibits are uh, retrieved from the house, and we will uh, forward the file to the DPP to make a determination whether anyone is to be charged for that incident. Polonia died from positional asphyxia due to freedom restraining measures. Her body was placed in a position that compromised her airways and she was unable to breathe anymore, resulting in her death. She was initially restrained with chains and padlocks for days and reports are that she died wrapped tightly inside a sheet. Internist Dr. Fernando Cuera breaks it down, likening the scenario to that of George Floyd in the U.S. who died from postural asphyxia. Asphyxia is a term where your your your, your air supply, your oxygen supply is cut off. And depending on what position or what abnormal position you're in, for example, if you're on your belly, okay, if a, if a knee or is, or is put on your chest, or if you're what they call hand tie bounded, if you're tied up in a position where you're bent over or hand tied, then that can cut off your airway, you know? And remember, your airway starts from your mouth and nose down to your windpipe and your chest. This happens over a period of time? Of course. It, it, it can vary. I, I can't say for sure how much time it can take, but it, it, it's not instantaneous. Okay. It's not instantaneous for sure. No? According to the family and friends, Polonia had no history of having suffered from any mental health condition. But the symptoms she exhibited say otherwise. There was the initial incident where this person was on the street mm -hmm. and that is a huge change from what she typically is a mother of five a respectable 34 year old and so in this instance that would have been a large indicator to seek out medical intervention psychotic episodes could be a result of a medical condition a, psych a psychotic episode could be the result of drug use a psychotic episode could be the result of bipolar disorder uh, a psychotic episode could be the result of many other things besides schizophrenia. That diagnosis, however, would have had to be done by a psychiatrist or a professional in the mental health field. While by all accounts it is not believed that the family intentionally caused the death of Polonia, their actions may have caused more harm than good. Professional counselor Amy Jack says that oftentimes our cultural beliefs influence the way loved ones choose to address a mental health issue. In this situation, it was a bit tricky because there are cultural aspects to we believe as a family that this may have been happening. You know, it's a, it's a cultural phenomenon that's happening. You know, we have these in many of the cultures in Belize, not just one in particular. But we do have um, cultures who are very spiritual, who believe that... Um, in some incidents, mental health concerns are seen as a, a religious experience or a cultural, um, spiritual experience. We have in Mestizo culture a certain spirituality. In Christianity, we have other spirituality, um, you know, where we look at um, spirits, possessions, demons, and, you know, all of these happen, and we don't want to undervalue that that happens in our culture. When we look at it from a mental health perspective, it's always in a cultural aspect. But what we really want to determine are one, the changes that are happening, and two, what harm is happening. So in this context, if we see someone who all of a sudden starts to blurt out profane things, from a cultural perspective, it could be a possession. From a mental health perspective, it could be, um, you know, a, a mental health diagnosis. You want to make sure that you see improvement in a shorter amount of time. If you see an exacerbation of symptoms, then you want to seek something else as well. Her friends, police and the community made several attempts to get Polonia assistance, but the family refused. While there is some level of restrainment used at medical facilities during psychotic episodes, Jack says that it is not done for a prolonged period of time. 
So when is the best time to seek professional medical intervention? If this person is a danger to themselves or to someone else, it's very important to seek help. So who do you seek help from? If culturally you are going to a pastor or culturally you're going to someone who's a spiritual leader, then that is one step. If you want, you can also go through the medical professional profession as well. Um, in that case, you go to the polyclinic nearest you or to the hospital nearest you. All the polyclinics and all the hospitals in Belize have opportunity for referrals to the psychiatric unit, to the mental health unit. So they have access to counselors, they have access to psychiatrists through the polyclinic. You want to make sure that you see improvement in a shorter amount of time. If you see an exacerbation of symptoms, then you want to seek something else as well. Dwayne Moody for News 5.